Mocha family, I am back to encourage you guys with a video just sharing some of the things I do to foster reading in my house. I have five kids, four girls, one boy. The boy is the oldest. He's graduated from college and working. Actually, um, my, my oldest daughter graduated from high school and she's working. And I have three that are still home. My middle child is a senior in high school this year and I have one starting high school and one going into fifth grade. And so I've noticed that it's not a one size fits all kind of situation. My husband and I love to read and have always read in front of the kids but I noticed that only my first three kids naturally love to read. Actually my first three kids and my youngest naturally love to read but I have one child that doesn't like to read and we often tease her about you know what happened <laughs> you know what happened why don't you like to read so all that to say it's not a guarantee that you'll get a kid that just naturally likes to read but I think there are certain things that you can put in place that even though they may not like to read they can still be good readers and good writers Here's one thing I discovered. I discovered from the books that we're checking out in the library that the quality of the writing that's popular is declining. <laughs> and by that, I mean more and more books are less and less descriptive and less and less creative as they were in the past, in my opinion. In fact, I noticed that my kids are bringing more and more books that are filled with dialogue and they like to ask, you know, to take out books that are nothing but dialogue. The whole story is dialogue. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with dialogue, but when it comes to writing an essay, knowing how to write dialogue may not necessarily be that helpful. So I don't tell my kids they can't read books that are what I call fluff. <laughs> they can read the, I allow them to read the fluff. But in addition to the fluff, I try to select books for them that have more descriptive pose, more um, hearty vocabulary, books that take, a t take their time to describe a setting, develop the character, and, you know, there's some kind of positive message in the overall story. And so in order to do that, I actually at at one point was going to the library and telling my kids they they could they could take out so many books that were nonfiction, so many books that were fiction and then with homeschool I created a curriculum for them where I put you know Newberry award-winning books and things like that on the curriculum and so someone asked me where I get my book list from, how I know what books to choose. I mean, I've been homeschooling for a really long time. I homeschooled my oldest all the way through high school, and I just shared that he graduated from college. So I've tried a lot of different things, but the curriculum that stands out for me for their books is Sunlight Curriculum. That's S-O-N, Light curriculum. I love their curriculum and I have a lot of the books because I use sunlight for the first three kids. And so I have a lot of the books in my library. And so, and whatever is not in my library, I find is easy to find in the bookstore. So you don't necessarily have to purchase the books yourself, but you can go on the website and see what they have listed and then get it from your library or if you want get it off, get it off of Amazon get it used I I often buy used books so that's another way to save money the last thing I'll say that's really been helpful is that I've learned with my kids do as I do <laughs> I mean not do as I do but do as I say doesn't work it doesn't work for me to just tell them to read when I myself am spending most of my time on my devices. So what I've learned is that if I model reading for them and my husband, he models reading and the oldest three that love to read, they model reading, then the younger ones tend to fall in line more. I'll say I haven't developed a love for reading in the one child that doesn't naturally like to read but she has a healthy ability and she writes well. 
And so when we're all excited in Barnes and Nobles for an outing, we're in Barnes and Nobles just wandering around, not necessarily buying anything, or stop for an afternoon in the library, that one reluctant reader, I've noticed that she's learned that, you know, maybe I'm not into reading novel after novel, but wow, this book teaches me how to do such and such and such. That's interesting. Or, wow, this book is about tornadoes. I've wondered about that. That's interesting. And so she's kind of learned that, you know, we're, everybody doesn't have to love one certain genre to enjoy books. And so I continue to go to the library and get all sorts of books and have them in a book bin that we have designated or lying around on the coffee table in the family room without giving anybody any instructions to read. I find that at times when people are bored and they don't have anything to do, they tend to go through those books. And I look for unusual titles like, you know, you know, Castle Life or with a bunch of pictures, like big lap, um, big um, coffee table books that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily get a whole stack of, but they might find interesting to look at. So we've developed a culture of reading in our family and it served us well because all of my kids write really well. So I hope that helps somebody. 